Good morning. Man, are we seeing prophecy unfold. Hallelujah. When are we going home? I pray it's this year. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Um, oh, you might hear Tom in the background. The interview that I went on went well. Uh, there's also um, other places that I applied at. Um, Instacart. Um, I can't remember the name of the place, but I knew the last sign. It's um, a place a brother or sister, I can't remember, um, told me about. It's um, It begins with an S. It, it's, let me see if I can look it up. Um, it's um, delivering food with Walmart. And um, so, you know, God's in control. What will be, will be. So I actually had a good night last night. Praise the Lord. Now, is normal coming back? No. This is a very weird election year. Don't y'all agree? No debate. No campaigning. No talk about the election. Because they already know. What I think, and then I saw... I've been saying this for a while now, and I actually saw a video that agreed with what I said. What I think is he's going to do the same thing this election that he did last election. And civil war is going to break out. This could be the era that we go home. And then there's that medical law. I've never heard about that thing. Now it's all over the news. You know why? Because these people spend $75,000 on tickets to this thing. When Maui Kanapali is still in ruins. Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The only way we get food is, praise the Lord, a church run of Tom's helps us with food. We can't afford to buy food. And I'm sure a lot of y'all can relate. We're struggling to feed our kids. We're struggling to pay the bills. There's people that are homeless. There's children that are homeless. And they're spent... How do these people sleep at night? I mean, if I had their kind of money, I'd be building, like... I always said I'd go into a homeless shelter, say, which family's been here the longest? Or I'd build, like, a housing community for people that are homeless. <clears throat> I don't know how they sleep at night. But you know what? They may have their riches now. But the day is coming. Judgment. They will have to answer to God. Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and you repent, we don't put our faith and trust in anybody or anything in this world. Not Trump, not Biden, not these celebrities who... Man... I don't even know if there's a word in the English language to describe them. We put our faith and trust in Jesus. Wherever you're listening in the world, don't put your faith and trust, not that you do, but don't put your faith and trust in those politicians. Because when the bombs drop, they're going to save themselves. They're gonna, they'll, be gonna, they'll be the first ones running into those underground quadrillion dollar shelters they have. Jesus loves you so much. He sacrificed himself for you. That's love. That's who we put our faith and trust in. And he is going to return soon. More and more people are coming out against the preacher of rapture. I'm going to read. Revelation 3, verse 10. King James. Okay. I've even been told believing in a preacher of rapture is Satan deceiving me. No. There is a preacher of rapture. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, not the church. Revelation 3 verse 10. Now, imagine a globe. Imagine everybody in the world on that globe. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, 
which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Can that, as Chandler Bing would say in France, could that be any more clear? There's an hour of temptation coming to try everybody on the world, but some will be kept from it. So what that's saying is some will have to go through it. Some will be kept from it. That's the rapture. Noah, Lot, Elijah. Noah and his family were deemed worthy. Lot, his family. They escaped. They didn't go through it. And they were protected with like a force field around them. They were they were taken out of harm's way. So I'm saying, well, Noah went through the flood. Yes, Noah went through the, through the flood. Not in the same way they did. They didn't drown. They were taken away. They were kept safe. We will also be taken away and kept safe. And it's coming soon. This is this article sickening. And remember, um, my backup channel, I believe it's Redeemed 51. If Tamar goes by and I don't make a video, that's why. The, this is from Now the End Begins. Y'all ready for this? This is, it is a, it's official. The Boy Scouts have rebranded themselves as the genderless, quote unquote, scouting America in violation of their own oath to remain morally straight. After 114 years, <coughs> excuse me, of being known as the Boy Scouts of America, the nation's largest scouting organization is changing its name to the more inclusive and genderless Scouting America. Oh, oh, Heavenly Father, help us. This country is in trouble. As a young child, nearly everyone in the family growing up was very much involved in the Boy Scouts. Me and all my brothers were Boy Scouts. Having entered into the ranks as first Cub Scouts, then Webelos, and finally as an official Boy Scout. How exciting it all was. My father was a Boy Scout leader of Troop 38, and my mother was a den mother in Pac-38 for the Cub Scouts. Here in 2024, if you have any children involved in any area of organized scouting, pull them out as fast as you can and don't look back. The whole thing is now the child recruitment arm of the LGBTQIATSL. There's more letters now. Oh, gosh. God made Adam and Eve. He made man, man, and he made woman, woman. They're playing God, and that's a big no-no. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Oh my gosh, are we here? I mean, people that believe, that agree with this kind of stuff, are they not familiar with the Bible and Sodom and Gomorrah? This country. Oh, boy. When I was a Boy Scout, this was the oath, we would say, at every meeting. Quote, On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep morally, physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. End quote. How on earth can you do your duty to God and be a part of an organization that mocks God? Right to his face. Oh, boy. How is it possible to take an oath to remain morally straight when you are in a group that has become immoral? When Adolf Hitler for, um, formulated <clears throat> his long-range plan, excuse me, to take over Germany, he rightly understood that to capture a nation, you need to first to capture a generation of children. He did this with the establishment of his Hitler Youth Corps in 1920. Almost an exact copy of the Boy Scouts. Scouting America, as it is now called, seeks to recruit a generation of children to serve in the end times army of Antichrist. Well, when the rapture happens, um, it says, do not let your child be their victim. When the um, rapture happens, so I believe it's like 10 and under, I think. What's the age of accountability, guys? Is it 10? Get raptured, but I understand what they're saying, though. 
Boy Scout rebrands as the genderless Scouting American Room. Boy. The major rebrand announced Tuesday comes after years of turmoil from the organization, as well as major changes meant to stem the tide of declining membership. The new Scouting American name is also a reflection of the organization's biggest change. The decision five years ago to welcome girls into its rank at all levels. Visitors to the Boy Scouts <coughs> excuse me, of America <coughs> website Tuesday were greeted by a pop-up message explaining that the forthcoming name change was made to be more welcome of the entire scouting community and would take effect, effect February 8th, 2025. I pray we're not here. I know Heavenly Father in Jesus' name, I pray we're not here. <coughs> <coughs> The one name, well, this is quote what they're saying. The one name will be new. Our mission remains unchanged. Um, I, I beg to differ. We are committed to teaching young people to be prepared for life. Roger A. Crone, president and chief executive of Scouting America, said in a statement Tuesday, quote, this will be a simple but very important evolution as we seek to ensure that everyone feels welcome in scouting. For years, the Boy Scouts have faced pressure from progressive members and outside groups to be more accepting not just of girls, but LGBTQ scouts and troop leaders. <coughs> the Boy Scouts ended its longtime ban in on openly. I gotta leave that word out. G A. You never know what they're gonna sense you for. Um, G A. Scouts in 2013, and it's um, against um, on G A. Troop leaders in 2015. Two years later, the organization announced that it would allow transgender boys in its ranks. <clears throat> in 2020, the Boy Scouts were rocked by public revelations that more than 84,000 people alleged that they were abused. And you know what type of abuse. I'm going to leave that word out, but abused. Well, in the Scouts with some claims dating as far back as the 1960s. The Scouts reached a historic $850 million settlement after victims, with victims after declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the face of mounting legal claims. According to the Scouts' 2023 annual report, the organization had more than 1 million children and young adults ages 5 to 20 enrolled in its membership. And they're changing their name. Yeah. Boy Scouts changing its name to Scouting America. To reflect inclusivity. They're working to become more inclusive. Uh, <clears throat> um, we'll look up something for a minute. One second. Um, <clears throat> well, I got a bad cough today. More than normal. Um... I'm going to read a little bit from Genesis 19. This is going to be verse 14 to 26. King James. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons and daughters, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose... <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the angels hastened to Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and said to him, Without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O, oh, not so, my lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou have sued unto me in saving my life, and I can not escape to the mountain lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold, now the city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape 
thither. Is it not a little one? <coughs> and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city. For thee which thou hast spoken, hasty thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen up the earth when Lot, sorry, that was my mother, entered into Zor. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all in the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and became she became a pillar of salt. <clears throat> so what did God do? He, they escaped. He got them out of harm's way. That's exactly what he's going to do for us. And that's what Revelation 3 verse 10 is talking about. Lot and his family were taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah before brimstone and fire fell upon the city. They didn't stay in the city and were just kept safe. He pulled them out. Pulled them out. That's what he's going to do for us. Pull us out. And this country is Sodom and Gomorrah. So, every day we're here, we need to pray for this world that more people give their life to Jesus. He loves you so much, he sacrificed himself for you. And whatever you're going through, I can promise you, it's almost over. I know life's tough, and I don't say that to get sympathy. It's just I know there are a lot of people struggling. And boy, I, I understand what it's like to struggle. The struggle to even put food on the table. The struggle to get medicine. I still got medicine sitting up there. I can't get. To struggle to put gas in the car. It's a struggle, 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 struggle. But you know what? Here's the good news. The struggle's almost over. That's what gets me through. Is I know I'm going to be home. I'm going to be home soon with my Heavenly Father. With my Savior. Jesus. We're going to be home soon. So. If you ever start to get weary. Get out the Bible. Pray. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. You will get through. I promise you that. God bless you. I love you guys. And I will talk to you soon.